can see ah, so we had eyes on those reptilian eyes didn't we but uh, i have more eye news for you dr mark barakat he is a doctor with retinal consultants of arizona nice to have you back with us pleasure to be back um you don't treat reptile eyes though uh, right? we try not to but on oh, occasion good. if you have to yeah, you do what you got to do, uh, right? Absolutely. And our eyes are probably like really different. We were talking about before, I know flies have like uh, this kaleidoscope, like a hundred different Probably eyes. Who, who knows? I know. Who knows? But this if you have an alligator come into a clinic, the, the, the key is to have a friend stand next to the alligator first to see how big they are. Do you believe that guy said that? I mean, come on, like, hey, Harry, stand over there by it. Let's see how big it is. Like, you know, uh -huh. I have a few friends I can think of, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so taking care of our eyes is a big job. It's always, you know, the research is always evolving in that. And you have, like, new research and stuff coming out on retinal care. No, no, actually, it's, it's, it's fascinating. What are we looking at? Can There's I say that? Absolutely. What are we looking at? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so one of the biggest public health nightmares really is, is macular degeneration. Mm. Macular degeneration is a blinding disease that affects uh, folks over the age of 65. It's the number one cause of vision loss in that age category. And it, it comes in two, two broad categories. There's, there's the wet where there's bleeding and swelling. And, and we have pretty good treatment, not, not perfect, but pretty good treatement for that. Um, but but for that's ninety percent of the that sounds really quite. If, is it painful too? It's or? not painful, but um, it it leaves your peripheral vision intact. But imagine a world where you cannot recognize the faces, you can't drive, stuff, yeah. you can't read. It's really hard to function. Right. Um, and the large majority of those patients, we cannot treat. We have nothing available. And this is for the dry? This is for the dry. And what, what is dry like? It's just like you have it, but you don't know you have it kind of? Well, it's, it's a wasting away of central vision. So uh, essentially, you, you start having missing spots in the center and then wavy lines. And, and before you know it, you, you might uh, not recognize your loved ones by, by, by seeing their faces, but you might recognize them by, by their voices or whatnot. And, and it can really? be quite So you don't even have peripheral vision with that? You have some peripheral vision, okay. enough to maybe get by. But so in other words, you'd be looking like this, like, oh, hello, Dr. Mark. Oh, absolutely. You know? I mean, in, in terms of watching TV, That's you would, horrible. It's, it's terrible. It's, you have to hold your TV over here. And, and many times you can't even make it out that way. And so oh. it, it's been really critical to try to find something that can treat this. And so now we are in clinical trials for, for new uh, molecules that can treat this sort of thing and slow it down. Wait, molecules? Yeah, you say? well, absolutely you molecules. You know, like part of like the whole atoms and yeah, well, cells and yeah, all that kind well, of stuff? Absolutely, you know? partially. Um, so what happens is you go through several different phases of clinical trials, and, and the last phase before you get approval by the FDA to, for a new medication is the right. phase three trial. Oh. Uh, and so prior to getting there, you have to sh first show in phase one and phase two that it's both safe and that it could work. In phase three, you, you, you take uh, uh, many, many patients and see if it actually is an effective treatment. So for example, we have one uh, compound, one molecule that has g gone through phase one and phase two. And now we're actually uh, part of the, one of the centers recruiting for this. Uh, we're planning on about 2,000 patients across the world in about 24 countries. Um, that can, as an injection, slow it down. It has shown in previous trials to slow down this central vision loss by up to about 44%, let's say 50% in some That's incredible. People. That's I fantastic. mean, I imagine you're gonna have people really jumping in on these trials. Well, absolutely, especially there's, if you think about it, there's really nothing else available other than slow, progressive. Uh, yeah, so I'm saying, what's the downside of this? Th there I mean, is very, very little yeah. downside, especially since it's so well regulated by by uh, the FDA. Right. Wow. So this is coming up. Yeah. So um, again, how many people would you say are affected by this, like every year in the U.S.? Well, I, uh, I, I can't tell you yearly. I, I can't tell you um, if about five to eight million people worldwide Currently are suffering have. from this. And and wow. if you look at the the, the population shift, we uh, as this country ages. This is becoming more and more prevalent. This has become a real problem. Is it genetic? Is it something we do or don't do? What is it, Dr. Well, it's, 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 a, it's a combination of things. So uh, about 50%, uh, 55% of it is genetic. It does run in families, unfortunately. And, and you can't really affect that. So you really have to focus on what you can affect. Can do it to fix it right. or stop it? And the, or? what you can affect is smoking or lack thereof. Mm. That has been linked with it. Okay. Um, the other thing is there are some vitamins to take, you know, um, that has been shown in previous trials to slow it down by about 20, 25 percent. Wow, okay, so, like your eye, like vitamin A, that kind of well, thing? Well, it's a combination or? of antioxidants, oh, okay. vitamin A in terms of lutein and zeaxanthin. 
uh, and then vitamin C and E and zinc and copper. So just yeah. like eat really good and get well, all those things you in? You know, what mom, mom said was right. <laughs> okay, now what about surgery? You have like some kind of 3D, you know, reality experiencing <laughs> surgery, <laughs> true vision. Uh, uh, it, it's about as cool as it sounds. Um, so. Uh, Typically speaking, we've, we've, for decades now, we've operated with the help of microscopes. As you might imagine, the eye is very small territory. We're dealing with millimeters. Many times we're dealing with microns. Um, and so that's why you need the magnification. However, now uh, we're slowly starting to transition over to a 3D, where you have a, a large screen, if you imagine, uh, with your 3D glasses, much like the movie experience. <laughs> Um, this is blowing me away. Okay. Absolutely. Now, this is for just people with poor eyesight. What is this? Well, th no, this is actually to, to help me operate. So instead of me using a microscope. Oh, so you're seeing in 3D. I am seeing in 3D. Oh. I'm I looking was hoping on you could screen. make us all 3D uh, so we wouldn't have to wear those <laughs> stupid glasses in the movie. No, that would be, that would be great. <laughs> um, but the, the perceived benefit. So is that in the future you can actually take images from the clinic with different scans and, and whatnot and overlay it on real life um, uh, images that you see from, from the camera and combine the two for hopefully for better outcomes and, and better surgical decisions. That's what I'm, So what has it been like? Has it just been kind of a flat thing you haven't been able to see behind and around? Well, or? no, you, you can see through the microscope, but if you think about a microscope, you're looking through essentially binoculars, yeah. and there's really not much else you can pipe into that a binocular. You, yeah. you can to some extent. Now imagine taking that same view, putting it on a 50, 60, 80 inch uh, monitor, if you will, and then you can really add any feed to it that you want. Yeah, you can switch it around and kind of look it around, do overlays and whatnot. I'll tell you, it's just like a movie. It's like a fantasy movie. This well, is amazing that this know, would be technology that you you ha you have this now. Uh, absolutely, I, wow. you know, I feel lucky to be uh, in this time of innovation. That I tell you that. Yay, because I'm here. <laughs> and if I have eye trouble now, you know, you can, because, you know, without your eyesight, I, that's got to be a really, really difficult thing. And even for it to be impaired so badly for, with the different diseases or whatever. So the fact that you have all these, these things that are coming along to help, you know, what a great thing. And you're telling people about it. Education is a big part uh, of what the Retinal Consultants of Arizona does for people, too. Well, you know, absolutely. I mean, you're only as good as, as, as the word that you get out to yeah. people. Um, no matter how, how bad it may or may not be, the earlier you catch it, the earlier you intervene, the, the better the outcomes can be. And as, as I mentioned, a lot of these conditions, including this, are very, very prevalent and very common. Yeah. And so community outreach is really one of, our, uh, one of the pillars of what we do. So uh, we, uh, we try to about once every, uh, every month or two to go to one of the community centers here locally uh, and in different communities where we are and, and, and talk to people one-on-one -on -one and, and, and small group settings. And really it kind of opens the floor up to, to different questions yeah. that people have about the eyes. Sure, lets what, you guys know what people need, but, but more even lets people know what's out there and what can be done to, to help them. So, wow, that is great. Retinal Consultants of Arizona making us see better. <laughs> I'm loving that. Dr. Mark Barakat, thanks for joining us again. It's been a pleasure, thank really, you so much. Really good news, interesting stuff always. Thanks, and 